Hey, do you like Riesling? I like Riesling. Find out if you should buy this wine next on Leet Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. All right, so let's get into some wine reviews. Um, before I do that, I know I'm not supposed to do any housekeeping, but this is kind of important. I am taking my advanced sommelier exam, uh, March 9th through the 11th, so I got the March exam. So, um, but my June, the January and February stuff I talked about in the last episode, I'm still doing that except for the Willamette Valley thing. And uh, yeah, I'm just in lockdown mode for studying. All right, so let's get into, um, oh, and Filmic Pro works, the whole remote thing. How, how cool is that? All right, so um, let's get into the wines. So uh, this wine here is the 2013 Dr. Uh, Nagler, uh, Nagler, 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 sorry, uh, Rudesheimer uh, Berg uh, Rosenek. Uh, Riesling Spätlese, uh, 2013. I got this off of Psalm Select for uh, $31, about. I think in a few, you know, a few cents here, um, and that was including like the shipping. You pay like a dollar or something like for the shipping now, and and some other stuff. So, um, so who's this? Who 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 are these guys? So uh, they were founded in 1826. Uh, the Berg uh, Rosenek uh, has been in the family since 1826. The area, um, oh, this is from the, uh, this is from the, um, <clears throat> the Rheingau. Um, so the area where these vineyards are, has, they've been doing cultivation there for like a thousand years, actually maybe more. And um, so the current uh, person who oversees a winemaker, uh, still family owned, is uh, Tilbert uh, Nagler. Um, they own 21 acres of vineyards kind of spread out through, throughout the area. Uh, I should have some pics. Uh, I got some pics from their website. So actually from Psalm Select's website, which is from their website, I think. Uh, so they've got, they got some pictures of the uh, vineyards. And let me tell you, they look like similar to what I experienced in Mosul. This vineyard itself is the steepest uh, part of the Rheingau. And um, it's so steep that these that some producers, I don't know about this one, but some producers actually use helicopters for vineyard management. Uh, the, this plot has wild rose, wild rose hedges, hence the name, uh, on the fringes of each rocky outcropping. Uh, see, fermentation and aging occurs in stainless uh, and, the very, and the occasional very old, very large oak barrels or fudra. Um, and they use sustainable, sustainable farming practices. So yeah, and they're part of the VDP. I don't think I don't know if I mentioned that, but um, so the little eagle here. This is a uh, it's an eagle with a bunch of grapes with a, you know grape bunches um, inside it. So uh, this is a private organization that's a quality level thing. So you'll get um, they have like all the quality tiers. So cabinet, uh, that type of stuff. Um, and uh, if I remember correctly, you have to be hand harvested to be a member. At least the wines that have this logo have to have that. And so let's get right into the wine. Uh, pretty deep golden color. Definitely a good amount of ar aromatics on this. Uh, I would call it probably a medium plus intensity because I can totally smell it like from back here. So it's got the classic Riesling, little petroly, waxy, plasticky, rubbery type of thing going on. With a mixture of, um, I say peach. A little peach, a little golden apple. A touch of pineapple. 
touch of other citrus or a touch of citrus like orange. But that, that petrol y, it's um, called TDN, that, that's really coming through a lot. It's kind of the overriding aroma for me, but the fruit's there. It smells slightly sweet on the fruit. And um, there's a touch of minerality, a uh, little rockiness, not necessarily slate, but a little bit of rockiness. But yeah, I mean, if I if I was doing a blind, I would immediately think this is probably Riesling, probably nothing else. It's just a matter of where is it from, and then figure it out. When it's to me, when it's this strong of that rubbery odor, I'm almost always going Germany. But you can get that from other parts of the world. But it seems most prominent for me in Germany. I just taste this thing. So being Spätlese, um, you're definitely going to have a little bit of residual sugar left over. Um, it's not sickly sweet. It is a little bit sweet. I remember that the uh, Germans were calling this a fruity style. And I would say it's probably a little bit sweeter than fruity, and they probably would agree for Spätlese. But um, yeah, it's delicious. So now you're getting more of that honeyed characteristic. You're getting um, kind of the sweeter fruits, like a candied orange uh kind of a not quite caramel apple but like a candied apple a little bit like that um kind of more of the reddish apple rather than the golden apple on the palate um but pineapple peach you know a fruit cup you know really really fruit forward I mean, this, this wine is really hard to spit because it's delicious and as I spray. So it's, um, the minerality that I got off of the nose isn't super present on the palate. Um, it's definitely a fruit, a fruity, fruit-driven wine. So I don't really get as much of that, that um, non-fruit characteristic, but... The acidity is definitely high. My mouth is watering. The sugar is is absolutely counteracting that. Uh, it's, I would say it's, it's got some good complexity. It's got a decent finish uh, as far as length. I mean, it's it's more the that fruit and the sweetness characteristic is really lingering. But since my mouth is still watering, the acid's still hanging around. So I mean, they're all working together to make a really delicious wine out of this. Yeah, this wine is awesome. So if you see if you see uh, Niglar um, out in the out in the market, definitely pick your pick up a bottle of, of this one specifically. Uh, the thirteen is drinking really really nice. Um, if I remember correctly, the Vintage was pretty good. Uh, I'm not gonna go look it up because I promise not to do that type of stuff. But um, if it was, it's, I know it's not bad vintage. But yeah, I mean. These, this is a really excellent producer, especially something from the Rheingau. I don't do a lot of Rheingau stuff. I, I tend to do a lot of Mosel uh, or Mosel. And, uh, and of course, I mean, I've been to Donhoff, so I've been to Naha, and I kind of have to have a little soft spot in my heart with them. But yeah, this is a delicious wine. If you can find it, you should get it. All right, so that's going to do it for this episode. Um, let's see. Click the links. Uh, if you go to the website, click the links, friend me up. Uh, if you're, I'll have a link below to uh, the actual website for these guys. And uh, click the subscribe button at YouTube. Or even if you're like watching on the website, there should be like, well, I don't know if there's a subscribe button. I should probably put those little subscribe things on the video. I haven't quite gotten to that level of uh, production yet. But yeah, you should totally buy this wine. All right, that's going to do it. And we'll see everyone again next time.